always say the big three, meaning the sun, moon, and ascendant, are the most important things in the chart. Why? If you could only know three things about a person's chart, the sun, moon, and rising are the factors you would probably choose. Taken together, they cover more of the psychological landscape than any other three items. Four of my family members have Leo rising, and many of my extended relatives have the same Mars. Do charts run in families? There seems to be only one item in all of astrology that consistently runs in families, and that's the planetoid Chiron, a rock from another solar system that was found between Saturn and Uranus back in 1977. While something may come up in the future through research, Chiron is the only one that shows a pattern of inheritance. Otherwise, positioning is a coincidence. What's the difference between having the sun in Cancer and having the moon in Cancer? First, let's talk about the difference between the sun and the moon. The moon is an inward feminine force. The sun is a masculine outer force. The moon symbolizes a drive to fuse with others and nurture. The sun symbolizes the drive to distinguish ourselves from others and stake our individual claim. The moon wants to nest and put down roots. The sun wants to go on the harrowing adventure of self-actualization. The moon focuses on emotional connection and a sense of belonging. The sun focuses on a sense of independence and self-discovery. The moon is our past and the unconscious mind. The sun represents the conscious mind and our destiny. So the sun and the moon are very different in terms of the processes they're in charge of. However, when they're in the same sign, they'll share common traits and similar attitudes about things. Despite being dedicated to different work, when in the sign of Cancer, both the sun and the moon see the terrain of life as rough and constantly shifting like a shoreline. Core lessons for both will be about having a hard shell, but keeping an open heart. Over and over, through different means, they'll both learn about inclusion and being receptive to love. They'll also share empathy, intuition, delicate sensibilities, and the need to be reclusive. In other words, same crab, different dance. What is a transit and what is its function? A transit is a planet moving in the heavens right now. The function of a transit is to activate the planets in your natal chart. Transits hitting the natal planets is why certain events occur and why those events happen when they do. What does it mean when a planet is combust? A planet that's combust is extremely close to the center of the sun, so close that it seems to vanish in its light. Another term for combust is Kasimi, which is a Latin transliteration of an Arabic term meaning as if in the heart of the sun. When a planet disappears in combust, it's said to weaken to the point of losing its identity. Combust is generally considered a negative state. 
Why are there different types of astrology, such as Chinese, Vedic, and Western? The brand of astrology different groups of humans created was dependent upon where they were located in the world and what the natural environment looked like. The kind of weather visited upon the seasons affected the symbolism of the zodiac signs. Likewise, the animals found in the vicinity influenced how constellations were labeled. The way life was perceived, the values held by a people, even the natural events in the environment altered the stories they told, and that was reflected in their zodiac. Are there cultural limitations in a chart reading? From system to system, absolutely. But even in the same system, it can vary quite a bit from one person to another. The more choices a person has, the more radically the planets can express themselves. Let's take a Sagittarius moon and its natural penchant for freedom. A single, childless, secular American with a Sag moon who's 26 and lives in L.A. probably experiences a high level of freedom. They can likely do whatever they want and choose from a variety of lifestyles. This type of excessive freedom is the greedy dream of the moon in Sagittarius. Compare that to a 26-year-old Turkish woman who was born into a conservative Muslim family. The freedom needs of her Sag Moon might be blunted by her wish to remain a respected member of her community. Freedom for her might manifest as waiting until she finishes med school before she marries while her parents nip at her heels about becoming an old maid. She might push the boundaries by leaving the hijab at home while partaking in a protest in the street. What she considers irreverent and bold might seem mild to the Sag Moon in L.A. Culture is one of the reasons an astrologer must have some basic information about the life and background of a client. A client's history gives a context in which to read the chart. An astrologer predicted the marriage of the singer Karen Carpenter in the 1980s. Can an astrologer tell the future that way? The answer to this question gets a little stickier today than it used to. I work with a nice couple on a regular basis. Before our last reading, I looked at the movement of the planets and it crossed my mind that they may have gotten married. During the reading, it turned out that they hadn't gotten married, but they had gone to a lawyer and had signed a cohabitation agreement. It had the legal aspects that a marriage does, but it wasn't quite a marriage. In the 1980s, it was probably easier to predict marriage because people didn't do all the fancy legal footwork that they do today. There just weren't as many options. What mindset does a good astrologer bring to a consult? Each astrologer will interpret a chart through her own worldview. If she's a visionary, she might talk in bigger ideas and a larger framework. If she values security, she might stress caution. If the astrologer is highly intellectual and leads with the mind, that might bleed through. Bias is impossible to overcome and it might be the reason you prefer one astrologer over another. Let me give an example. There's an agitator and an activist in me, so 
I look at the movement of the revolutionary planet Uranus as a thrilling prospect. A few years ago, I encountered a client who looked at it differently. I talked a number of times about the opportunities for awakening that were on the way for her. When she'd had enough of it, she blurted out, I don't want to awaken. How do I not awaken? I went quiet while I regrouped. It would never have occurred to me to view the uncompromising rebellion of Uranus as a negative. So I had to look at the planet of mutiny as I never had before, a threat to be controlled. While I wouldn't dodge the growth spurt offered by a Uranus transit, I place high value on individual will, so I wanted to help her however I could. From what I know about Uranus, I pieced together some advice that made sense. I think it's important to have an open mind and to try to read the chart in a way that the client is open to. It's good to keep their values in mind. Personally, I'm fond of an astrologer with sharp intuition so that insights are constantly erupting into consciousness as the reading unfolds. Thank you for watching Secrets from an Astrologer's Desk, Cosmic Questions and Answers number 7. Stay tuned for all the ways you can get in touch for a birth chart reading and full astrological services. I'm Joy. More videos to come.